Hi everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood California Mojave Gardener here. Now today I've shown you my harvesting. This wind is ridiculously blowing. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare your peppers to dehydrate them. Put on two pair of gloves. That's four. Put on four. Two here, two here. Nice sharp knife, cutting board, something to put your seeds in. I'm putting my seeds in here. They're going to stay in here. They're going to dry out. And wash your peppers, which uh, they're still in water, but I have done them here. You don't have to keep them in water. I just didn't want to get up. I just didn't feel like getting up. All right, so we're going to go right into it because I've already done some and I'm going to show you and then I'm going to let you go. And then you're going to go ahead and do this. All right, we ready? Let's do it. All right, I hope y'all can see me. Now what I'm doing is, now these are serrano peppers. Just to let you know, they are serranos. Serranos, when they're young, they are green. When they've totally matured, they are red. There's no difference in the heat. The only difference is if they're small or if they're large. If they're small like these, compared to the ones you buy in the store that are about that long, these are hotter than the long ones. I've had them, I bought them when, they, when the plant was about a foot tall. And they really, the peppers really have not really grown any. It's like their, their, their size is stunted. I think this is the longest one that I have. Now, let me show you what I am doing. Let's see if I can get you down a little further. All right. So I'm cutting the stem off which as you can see this red one right here put those over there i've already cut the stem then i'm going down the middle and then the reason for the gloves is to remove the seeds now how i remove them is i get a bath i get some type of vessel to put them in i don't want to move them around a lot so I'm just putting them in here and letting them dry out. Now, what you want to do, you want to go ahead and open it a little bit just to loosen up the vine, the vein, I should say. Grab a hold and go ahead and pull it. Now, if you don't want your serrano pepper powder, which I am making, if you don't want them they hot, that hot, then you're going to remove the vein and you're going to remove the seeds. Then what you're going to do is take them and place them on the dehydrator. That's it. And I'm going to let them dehydrate for about eight hours. So, say, if I don't come back to them tonight, since it's 1.15, say about tomorrow, they should be ready. Okay. I'm also going to do my bell pepper. Now, I've done this one already. Now, let me show you what I did. Because my other video just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. You're going to take your knife. And you're going to cut right around the stem. Okay. When you cut right... The wind is moving the trash can, y'all. That's crazy. When you cut around the stem, it's like this. Okay? You could literally just remove the stem... And majority of your seeds now 
with a bell pepper, I suggest that you remove the vein and the seeds. Seeds you keep in a separate um, area so you don't get your, your sweet mixed up with your hot, okay? And you let those, you let the seeds on each, okay, that's that seed. You let them dry out from one to three days. Then you put them in something paper or paper envelope and you label them and you put the date on them that you harvested the seeds. That way it will be much easier for when you get ready to grow them. Now I'm gonna grow another bush of each of these. So what, what my plan is, you still have to let them dry out. Either way it goes, they have to dry out. So one to three days of good drying out, when they're completely and totally dry, I am going to put them in a cup with some nice, light, and fluffy uh, soil. Or I might put them inside a wool rock and do hydroponics, depending on what I want to do. Because I, I want another bush of these, and I need to get them started. Brassicas, I just found out, is like your leafy greens, like your kale, your spinach, your lettuce, your char, things like that. I want to grow that, but I have to have something that I can put over my raised bed to protect it from the bugs. So... Let's go ahead and do a couple of these. Now, I've already cut some, and all I'm going to do now is seed them. You get a hole fairly quickly in these gloves. That's why I had to put on a second pair. As you can see, I have a hole here. I also have a hole up here, which I put the hole, I put the new ones, I put the new ones underneath and put the whole ones on top. So if I'm going to rip those more, that's not a big deal to me. But yeah, this is what you want to do. Just take your seeds. Hop it right there. Grab hold of the vein. Use your fingernail and go down them. If they're the big ones and you can't use your fingernail, I have little fingernails, so it's basically easy for me. But... Not all of these seeds are viable, but you never know what you're going to get. So, I say keep all your seeds anyway. You can always, once they dry out, you can always go through and pick the viable ones out from the brown ones that I do have some brown ones in here. Now, if you want it hot, if you want your serrano pepper powder hot, leave the vein and leave the seeds in. Just cut the stem off, cut them in half. That's basically all you have to do and put them on a dehydrator and let the dehydrator go for what it know. Now, my dehydrator is a Presto. There's no set time on it, so... I really have not read the direct the directions because I know how to run a dehydrator. But I did not know the dehydrators do come in different temperatures as far as the low temperature and the high temperature and the main temperature. Now this one, try not to pop them everywhere. This one has a main temperature. In other words, you cannot adjust it. It's one temperature. What it is, I have no idea. I would have to look in the directions. And I think my directions are 
here in the kitchen somewhere. But who knows? Now, the vein in the middle of the red ones, since the red tells you that the pepper is totally matured, the vein, as you can hear me crunching into it, is a lot more hearty. In other words, all that crunching you was hearing me do, that was from the red ones. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm trying to get them all done so I can just be done before I put on the hydrator. Then I plan to put on the hydrator. I have two boxes, so I get my other box like this and do my bell pepper. Now, see, originally my bell pepper, I did buy it from the store. Oh, my God. It's knocking over everything. Oh, my goodness. I have to go out there. It's just... It's just knocking over everything. It's moving the trash can. I have to get some kind of wind barrier out here. Luckily, I do have some tarps and some jumbie cords. And yeah, I'm going to have to go to the store after this. I don't like driving in the wind because when high winds like this, let me tell you. They will, they will push you out your lane, especially if you're on the freeway. So if you're on the freeway, don't do 65. If you're on the freeway through the canyon, watch out because as soon as you come across that canyon, come from in back of one of the mountains or the hills, that air is going to hit you and it's going to knock you into another lane. I remember the first time I ever drove in wind, high winds. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank goodness. Thank you, Jesus. That, whoo, let me tell you, that that 18 wheeler diesel truck did not hit me. Because I went from the far right lane into the middle lane of the freeway. <sighs> thank, good, thank goodness he was going slow. Because at that time, I didn't know I was supposed to go slow. I kept trying to do the speed limit. And then I said, nope, I'm going to have to slow down. This speed limit ain't going to work because it's either me getting knocked over by the wind or there's an earthquake and either way you don't want to be going at high speeds so yeah i'm just glad to be still be here Whew. and you're probably wondering why i have the bo box on my lap instead of on the table well since i was in a car accident my shoulders are shoulders and my neck and the top of my back is really hurting so being up like this trying to do this i it i wouldn't be able to do it i tried to do it in my other video and it was so it was hurting just a little too bad so i rather just it's easier to just Drop your shoulders. Ah. Woo! Everything is getting tossed around. Oh, what is that? See? Yeah, I might have to hurry up and do this video and go outside. And I'll probably film it on how to. I don't know if I could film it because the winds is blowing in several times. It had knocked over my tripod. Yeah. And as you can hear, my cabinets are having a hissy fit. That's because the window 
is cracked open so I can get some fresh air in here. Oh, and when you're dehydrating this, if you can, put your hydrator in the garage. If you can't put it outside. Or you if if it's if it's not burning your eyes or anything like that when you're dehydrating, then you can go ahead and dehydrate inside. I don't know what it's going to do, but you have that option. And I would suggest you put on a pair of glasses while you're doing this. I mean, it's not bad, but just in case you get some of the juice flick off in your eye, you'll still be protected. Now, these are the last of them. Thank goodness. So, I will be back as soon as I can get these done. All right. All right. I'll be back. All right. I'm done right now. Just simply putting them on dehydrator. You might not get all the seeds out. It's okay. Not a big deal. All you care about is putting them on the dehydrator. Put the inside down because they dehydrate faster. Don't crowd. Give everybody plenty of room. And this is basically all you have to do. And then once you do this, you either turn your dehydrator on or... You do like I do and just plug it in. Mine's plug in. So now, as you can see, I do have a smaller screen on my dehydrator. I purchased that at uh on Amazon. You get four of them. I forgot what the price is. The price might have changed, so I really don't want to tell you the price. But I am going to oh, drop one on the floor. Pick it up. Rinse it off in my water real good. Put them on top. Now, mines are layered. So, let's see. All right, this is the dehydrated side, and this isn't. This side, you put it down there, it collapses in on itself. You put it like this, it stands out. Now, these are what I purchased. You get four of them. I have four trays. They have a set of four. Perfect. For all your smaller stuff, because your small stuff can go through this, but it can't go through this. I've done rice on here. Where I cooked the rice, and when it got just about done, I spread it out on, on this, sitting on top like this, spread it out, and put it on the dehydrator. Dehydrated it, and what I did was I made instant rice. I don't think I have a video of that. Um, I might do that again. And that was for sticky rice. Um, I might <clears throat> do some jasmine rice next. But you just put them on here however you want to put them on here. They don't make a difference. Just as long as you have enough room for everybody. You just put them up there. Oops. Drop the one right here. And I'll be back when I'm done with that. All right, I'm back. I can take that. I've rinsed my knife and my cutting board off. I can now take the gloves off and throw these in the garbage. Now, 
what I am doing is seeds. Now, you say, where is my vessel to put my seeds? Because you do not want to put your seeds in there. Ooh. So I'm going to put them in there. All right. All right. So here we go. You can either let this dry out and pop them off, or you can just go ahead and pop them off now. All right, that's trash. Oh my goodness. Y'all won't believe what's going on. I'm gonna have to show y'all a picture of all of it. All my stuff got blown over. All right. So, these, go ahead and see, this is what I don't like because of my shoulder hurting. So I'm gonna bring it over here come down here and as you can see I'm just gonna take the seeds out then you definitely need to remove the veins wow please don't knock my stuff over when you don't knock nothing else over okay see I have removed all the seeds see that vein right there I want to remove that Voila. No then. Then what you're gonna do? I'm gonna chop mine in the strips, just like that. And you can still sit them on the same dehydrator tray. It's okay. It won't hurt anything. If you can get them laying down, but most likely you can't, you have to lay it over to the side and you just keep doing it. Take these out. I can't believe that I grew bell pepper. Oh, and I didn't get a chance to finish the story. Okay, where these seeds came from. Okay, the seed to grow this bell pepper came from the grocery store. So anybody who tells you you can't grow stuff from the seeds that are, that are at grocery stores, <laughs> yeah, I'm a living proof, hello. Because what I was doing is I was eating a different flavored tuna inside of bell pepper. So I would get the bell pepper and I would stuff them. I would take the seeds and the vein out of it. And I would literally, literally stuff them with like lemon, pepper, tuna, buffalo, barbecue flavor, things like that. You know, the ones that come in a vacuum pack seal, we're gonna keep not, we're not, we're not gonna say the name of, but you know who I'm talking about. Cause he's chicken of the sea. Let's just say that. Um, so then I would clean all the seeds and the veins out of them and I would save the seeds. So when I save the seeds, I'll do just like this. I took the seeds out. <laughs> Get them off my hand. I will cut. Let me cut this in half. I will cut the vein out and then I will stuff my stuff, my bell pepper. And that's basically what I had for either lunch or for dinner because I wasn't really hungry. So what I would do is I would dry out my seeds just like how I'm drying them out now. They will be dried out. And don't put your seeds in a dehydrator because it's going to cook it. Uh, just... Leave your seeds in something like this. Sit them aside. Tell them, if you have family members, tell them don't touch them because you want those seeds. Or put up a do not touch sign or something. 
I got hard-headed people that live here, so they don't listen. But, um, and then once they dry out, like I said, anywhere from one to three days, you never know. It just depends on how big and how juicy. And you just, you check them. You just check them. And, um, here go three seeds. I'm going to put those over in here. Once they dry out, excuse me. Once they dry out, you take them and you put them inside of a, a envelope and you label them the day that you took them out. So I will be putting on the label the date that I took them out of the bell pepper. Watch your fingers. All you have to do is do a little rocking motion because you don't even have to go all the way in. And then I think I accidentally wasted uh, one of my seeds in my soil in uh, one of my beds and it started growing. And I said, well, let me see if this is a, here goes some more seeds. Let me see if this is a volunteer plant. So as it got bigger, I still didn't know what it was. Okay, some of these seeds are not good, but I will still save them. And once they dry, make sure you go through them. Um, but I decided, okay, we'll see. So as it was getting bigger, and I would say it was about four inches, I didn't know what it was. So a friend of mine said, go on that Planted app. So I went on this Planted app, and they tell you to take a picture of the leaves. You take a picture of the leaves. It doesn't tell you what pepper plant it is, but it did tell me it was a pepper plant. So I said, okay. So... I'm gonna go ahead and care for this, which I did. And now I ended up with bell pepper. Because what I did was I, I had in my bag a variety. I had red, orange, and yellow. So I must've dropped my, one of my red uh, seeds must have dropped one of them in here, in the soil, because now I have red bell pepper. And since I mixed them all up together, I don't know which is which. Now, if you like a certain variety, I advise you to keep that variety together. To me, the yellow, red, and the orange, they were all sweet to me. They were good. So I'd rather eat those than eat the green ones. So I didn't buy any green ones. I refused to buy me any of those because the sh flavor was good, but it they were just too strong for me. So let me show you this. See how it is? This side right here, that brown side, that's not a good side. But then you have some white ones over there. I would take all the white ones off like this. Take as many as you can get off without taking the brown ones off. That's it. That's all I could get. I got some brown, but that's all right. I will, they will dry the color that they are, so I'll be able to tell them apart. And then you go in again, you just cut them, place them on here, and I'll be back as soon as they're done. Now, real quick, I'm done. I got three layers. And since I still have room, I'm going to go outside to those bunches of onions, you know, the green onions. I do have some green tops that have grown since the last time I cut them. Who this wind is blowing? 
I am going to run outside and clip the tops, wash them off real good, and I'm going to place those up here, and we're going to get those done also. But I'm going to go ahead and get off of here for now. I'll show you guys tomorrow or later on tonight the ending results. But just remember, this is your Cal friendly neighborhood California Mojave Gardener saying love, peace, and grow something. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you can get every single notification of when I upload a video. And I shall talk to you later. Peace.